hello and welcome to a mountain top repair shop today i have a little gift from my father the infinity rs2 monitor speakers from well, bookshelf speakers um pretty nice uh, 100 watt speakers that uh, um we got a long time ago and uh, have been in storage for a little while i was pretty excited to get them because uh, i've been wanting a nice little set of monitors so I took them apart and uh, took a quick look and saw that we had a little bit of a ruffling-ness on this side of the speaker. <clears throat> and uh, when I was looking at this speaker right here, I noticed that there was yeah, a little bit of a tear right here in the, uh, in the rubber surround. So I was afraid this thing would, uh, you know, maybe sound a little rattly when it was running. But the uh, funny thing is, this is the one that was making all the noise. <laughs> but um, I think the uh, I think this speaker is blown, and that one is torn. So I was ready to get myself some new woofers. All the speakers that I was looking at that actually fit the bill had foam on the front of them, and I feel like it's just going to be visible right around this edge right here. You might even see the screws. So when I went into a 7 inch speaker, I found a speaker that actually looks beautiful behind this face, but we're going to have to make some modifications on the inside because the hole needs to be a little bit bigger, the actual baffle cutout. And um, I'm going to have to hide the thickness of that new speaker a little bit, so we're going to trick the edge here with a little bit of foam and bring this whole face out maybe an eighth of an inch. So, we've got a little bit to uh, do to take these out, but uh, we're also going to uh, um, have to take all, we have to take everything out because there is going to be, uh, you know, a lot of sawdust with this little adjustment to these speakers. So we have to get all the electronics out, get the insulation out, and uh, get these things ready for the wood shop. So, anyways, we'll get to that point coming up. Let's uh, take the face off this thing and see what type of modifications we need to make. Those first four screws hold on this frame right here, but there is sometimes a little something extra. I do believe these guys have a little adhesive that keeps things from rattling, but also holds these things on like a bear. I'll have to gently take it apart and loosen up this. Got the adhesive piece midway down here. Just gonna gently press on that till it pops off. Good adhesive. Check the bottom too on that. Yeah, the bottom's loose. So yeah, just right in the middle there. That is some good sticky. Maybe a little bit of uh, prying here, gently. Our digging pad. Up oh, there we go. So I'll drive this thing in here slowly. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, little adhesive piece right there. And then we'll run this way. Oh, maybe just. Yeah, actually, yeah, that works just fine. So, there we go. That thing popped loose now. Yeah. So, all right. Now the tweeter is mounted in the uh, in the uh, bezel here. So, get that off. Black is ground and blue is positive. Go. Well, the tweeter's still good, so that's good. Right, but anyways, <laughs> you can see this is the opening of the speaker. There's not much space on the edge here before this flat part comes down, and this flat flat part is, you know, not hitting the uh, speaker cabinet. <laughs> this particular speaker right here is. Uh, so they call that truncated when they do it on just two sides. This is done on four sides. So these areas out here where the actual screws go 
would make the speaker, if it was a complete circle, a 7-inch speaker. So that's what I got, a 7-inch speaker, because that's the one thing that's going to fit in here and actually look good. I mean, the hole in the cabinet needs to be the same exact size as this hole right here. So we can actually use this to trace onto that. But first, let's get that uh, woofer out of the way. When I went looking for this particular woofer, I could have gotten this woofer. They thought I would have gotten another old woofer. You know, it could have been just as old as this one. It may have been tested and is working. It may work for a month or a year or something, and then be no good. So I figured, let's get a new speaker. But, like I said, I couldn't get this exact speaker. I had to get something close. I found a uh, place called Parts Express, which is great for speakers. I actually got found them because I was uh, trying to repair the DeWalt radios that I have for work because the uh, DeWalt radio speakers don't tend to last. But they are small, odd speakers. We will do a DeWalt radio job soon. All right, so here we have our opening. We have our woofer with a shielded... Uh, shielded coil there. This neutral is uh, red with a black stripe and then the hot is red. Positive and negative. But yeah, there's definitely some some rippling right here in the cone. It's hard to see. Yeah, that's a good angle right there. You can see that all right. But yeah, it didn't feel good pushing it in too. A little dirty and musty. It's been in storage. <laughs> All right, so get that out of the way. <laughs> All right, so our cabinet here has these wires in a little sealed box. We have to remove the crossover, but just to make our point here, I'll take and put this face piece right back over everything, right where it sits comfortably, get it back in place, and then we'll take a mechanical pencil and we'll trace on straight down exactly what I want to cut away. Because like I said, I want that to be I want the hole in the cabinet to be the same size as the hole in this face frame. Alright. So, you can see it's a little bit different size there. But, I mean, these have just kicked right back on. Alright, there we go. Now we can see what we need to cut it back to. That line right there. So, now we will strip these cabinets of their parts and insulation. Take this stuff out. Oh, I'll probably put some glue on there to keep it from moving. Eh, that seems to be coming out. Yep, just one big brick. To, and then there's a crossover in the back there, so I'll have to pull that assembly out. But luckily, it's mounted to the board. Nice, this will work out well. What we'll do here is pull this out. The tweeter wires are going to a cup and there's silicone through there, and I didn't want to have to pull that through. I kind of wanted to tuck those out of the way. And as it appears, it seems like uh, those tweeter wires are actually connected to terminals that go to this crossover here these the blue and black so yeah it says positive and negative so I remember which is which plus they use two different size blades so that helps too you pop those two off and leave them in the cabinet because I can get sawdust all over a couple of wires and it won't be a big deal <laughs> we just have to make sure to keep things clean so there's our connection for the woofer that just attached to the crossover we can put this aside, and we'll do the same thing to the other speaker. 
and then take these things over to the shop and uh, just we're gonna use a router the only thing is I'm gonna have to cover up the sticky spot because the router's gonna get stuck on it but we're gonna route around this hole with an angled bit and then use a straight bit to continue get rid of the angle that we made and that will in turn make it larger I'll uh, we'll have to uh, we'll get it close Maybe a little bit extra, maybe a little bit under, but that line will be in that neighborhood. Before we head out to the wood shop, let's check out the new woofer. I already ordered these, so I got them in ahead of time. This is the Dayton Audio 7-inch aluminum cone woofer. Yeah, that's pretty. I mean, oh, yeah. So, anyways, side by side, these woofers are actually kind of different. <clears throat> See how this one looks a lot smaller in its circuit. Yeah, kind of hard to tell here, but let's look at it. So, this one right here has got that uh, weird shaped frame. This one has a full circular frame. That circular frame is going to be kind of big, and it's not going to sit in the speaker cabinet perfectly either. This is why we have to go make our modifications because I get it in there and it just kind of uh, floats about that high. It's not exactly right. So, Anyways, <clears throat> but one of my options was to actually grind down the sides a little bit and take off the edge. I didn't like that option. didn't want to make a bunch of grindings next to my aluminum cone woofer and get metal filings all in it. So we're going to use a little trick that involves gasket. It's going to hide everything. I think it's going to work pretty well. But first we're going to make this hole bigger. But also see my line of thinking this flat part of the rubber right here was really important that it was exactly that diameter because I don't want to see the screws I don't want to see anything I want it to be nice and clean when it's all finished and put back together so here is one of the frames when this speaker goes into the frame it looks like it fits just right the screw holes are going to be out of the way you're not going to see anything but these two fat strips do lay flat against the speaker. And you can see we're overlapping slightly on either side. So, like I said, we're going to do a little trick with foam. And foam is good because it also keeps things from rattling. So, you know, there'll be no buzzy sounds when we add some foam in there. One last interesting side note about these speakers is uh, they're quite different from one another. And these are the two speakers that came in the RS2s. Um, it is kind of strange. First off, that uh, looks like uh, this one maybe had a, know, like a different foam kit or whatnot. This rubber around the outside is a different design than this side right here. This rubber right here, it's got uh, you know maybe a quarter inch flat band around it. This one right here has like a three eighths flat band around it with a little barb at the end. <laughs> the cone over here looks like it was. Uh, like loosened and then reapplied sideways but looking from underneath it kind of looks crooked underneath too so it looks like the whole thing was made crooked <laughs> but then speaking of underneath um yeah i'd say uh i'd say these uh magnets are two different sizes i mean these are shielded covers but still that's the the difference in these two bottoms right here in diameter is is night and day you know this one is much larger and there's magnet in there it's it's strange it seems like this is a more powerful speaker and it's also falling apart more than this one i don't know what's going on but i'm uh, looking forward to getting some new speakers in there and uh having them uh having them match funny thing is like i said i could get some used versions of this who knows if i was going to get this one or this one if i bought used ones and on top of that the used ones were almost twice as much as the new ones so I'm going to make the modification and we're going to do the new ones. All right, well, we scored a nice weather day after all, so I'm not going to set up inside the cabin. I'm going to set up out in the yard here where there's so much lighting, there's actually too much, but I won't squint too much. We'll try to keep it right. So the plan here is to use the laminate router 
to make our baffle cutouts a little bit larger. And how we're going to do that is we're going to use a small cove bit to start. Now, the cove bit has a bearing that's going to ride the original baffle opening while cutting the rest of it wider. And as holding it right on here, it actually is the exact amount of extra width I need. It's perfect. So that'll ride inside there and cut half of the baffle out to the proper size. And then use a tracing bit to cut, to ride the new cut with the other bearing and cut the rest of it out so it's all nice and straight. <laughs> and uh, therefore no crazy messy jigsaw stuff that could wobble around. This is going to just, you know, it's gonna ride the, uh, the old baffle cutting and just make it larger, exactly where it was cut in the first place. So let's put this thing on and see what we can do. So first off, we're gonna put that in the chuck, tighten things up, get our fence on there, and make some adjustments. Now I already pulled a little bits of adhesive off of these things as they're not gonna be needed in the new design. They won't actually do anything because like I said, we're gonna give a, a total foam border to this thing to have that face frame rest on and uh, that'll give it a little bit extra height while also giving us um, you know, vibration protection, which is important here. All right, so looks like it takes a pretty decent chunk out of it. Guess we can uh, uh, make a little sawdust. Yeah, we could have done that in the studio. Made a little bit of mess up there. Have to clean off every surface. Uh, it'd probably take a couple days to get clean again. So now you can see we have a wider ring, which is the exact size that we need. But now I have to get rid of this material that still exists that we were using the bearing to ride on. But first we'll do the other speaker before we make any chuck changes. I assume the breeze is probably helping keeping dust off the camera as well. All right, so this little cove bit has made things wider, but only on the top half. So this straight bit has the bearing on this half of the shaft. So this bearing will ride on this new edge that we made and make the bottom edge match it. Then we should be able to put some speakers in. All right, so straight bit in, get that tightened up. Put the battery back in. You always want to unplug these things when you're uh, changing bits because you never want to get your hand anywhere near these things. They just shred things up. But uh, in this case, we have to pull the battery to be safe. All right, so make sure that our wires aren't in a silly spot that might get hit. Everything looks good. So now we can adjust the bearing to meet just about where it should meet. In fact, if I just eyeball this thing, the bearing should be coming down a little bit from the top point and everything else will get cleared out. All right, so this is where we're starting with. Turn this thing on. A little silicone back here that I hit, but that's okay. It's just extra silicone from this uh, insert here, tr trying to isolate the tweeter in its own little compartment. <laughs> but uh, I thought I hit something important because I started seeing little flakes of uh, what isn't wood flying around. But anyways, yes, <clears throat> this is exactly why 
we're doing this outside. <sighs> Routing always makes lots of dust. Because we're not just cutting off a little extra, we're turning all the extra that we want to cut off into dust. If I had a jigsaw blade, it would make, you know, a little cut through here, we'd take a ring out. But in this scenario, the ring is dust. But also, our holes are perfection. And perfection is the most important part. It's the whole reason why we're doing this, because we don't want this to look like a hack job when it's done. It wants to look nice and clean and sound wonderful. Can't wait to turn that on. So yeah, there's a bit of uh, bit of silicone right there that I'm gonna route into, but that's okay. Eh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yep. So, a little silicone, but perfect hole cut out. <clears throat> yeah, that gets rid of some of the sawdust. But I prefer a more proper approach. I see goats. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, yes. These batteries have a million uses because DeWalt made a million tools for them. Ah. Funny thing is, we're actually recording this with a DeWalt battery right now because the camera uses USB for power and they have USB adapters for DeWalt batteries. Now we need to clean things up. This would have been a lot of fun to clean up after, if we did it in the studio. All right, that one's good. We'll give it a vacuuming and a quick wipe down to get kind of the old mustiness out of there. All right, that way we'll be carrying a minimal amount of dust back into the studio where we will clean and vacuum these things up and try out the new fit. Got a good feeling about the new fit. Wish I had one out right now. I'd put it in right now, but the speakers are back in the studio. Yeah, the old ones too. All right, well, let's head back in. What we'll do is just go over it real quick. So, we got our new Dayton Audio aluminum cone here. <clears throat> and knowing that uh, this is a five-star pattern instead of four, so these four holes aren't gonna do any good for me. And also, <clears throat> they put the uh, single hole up the top, which is not going to screw into anything. So I'm going to give this a slight clockwork turn here. And I'm going to put the center hole in the bottom. That way everyone can get a bite. So I got things, I moved things around, and I kept on checking it against the face frame. And making sure it would sit right in there, right where I wanted it to. Get that face frame on straight. So yeah, I think it wants to come this way a little bit. Oh, that's too far. <clears throat> Covers up part of that little compartment, but the tweeter's so small it'll fit right in there. So anyways, back on here again. And get that straight on there. Right, it looks pretty good. It's gonna look nice and clean. The other speakers that we were looking at had the screws right on this part of the ring. So, they'd be partially visible, not to mention they had that really high foam, which I guess I was planning to, uh, if I had to go that way, that high foam was for a back mount, so I'm going to have to peel it off, because there was going to be no space for it. With this, these face frames made things very particular. So, now that we know we like right where that speaker's falling, I also went ahead and reinstalled each crossover and the insulation in the subwoofer cavity. 
All right, so let's pre-drill the five holes that we've marked with a pencil earlier. You're going to have to raise the face frame about three sixteenths of an inch. Well, just to add foam to the edges. So, from the top. Oh, this should also be good for, you know, eliminating any rattle. But also, I guess I could probably forego the bottom part. But part of me is like, why? So, all right. So, for good luck's sake, we're going to miter these corners. In the name of good luck's. Mm, no. I should cut from the, ins from the inside out. Pretend I'm left handed there. And the best part is, you can take that mitered edge you just made to start the next direction. So, bring that up to the edge right there. You need to hang over and wait. Get this extra tape out of the way. And then we will lay this part down. make a mark and then press down through because it doesn't like to be cut in the direction where you're dragging things. Alright. I love that cheaply manufactured stuff that we have here. And this one will be a little bit difficult because it's overlapping the first one. So it's not going to cut. But you can at least see my angle without needing a square. Haha. -ha. It's a good place to do that right at the bottom, but it came out perfect. And uh, that's good enough. Perfect is okay. We can deal with that. Now, I'm going to have to cut out a little bit for the speakers. So we will need a speaker.
We'll get ourselves a speaker and put it in place. Now, the speaker just has to be in place with regards to the whole placement and the rings. I'll also get it all straight here. That's right. I put my head right in the way because I'm going to look directly on it. Very good. All right. So the speaker sits right there. I like that, so I'm going to do a little knife trace just to see what gets removed right here. Put another knife trace over here. Get around the corner with that. There we go. Pull that out of the way. Got a couple of indents that I can use as reference points. Now, it's a little bit harder. I'm going to try to. I want to drag things around, so I'm going to try to saw it a little bit. Because I don't want to drag that gasket all over the place. Alright. There we are. A little half circle there. Uh, that is definitely not a half circle. Alright. Bite, bite, bite. Put a little indents in here, but that doesn't matter. They will come right out. Plus, we're gonna indent it with our, uh, with our face frame here soon, and it's going to conform and love its new setup. All right, so now this in place. Get ourselves a uh, a woofer to install for good now. So the hot one is the bigger one, and it's, these blades, this, the Infinities have a larger bl blade on them, so I'm going to crimp this thing down so it makes a nice good tight connection. I don't want it to fall off the speaker, so this is the positive. We are marked positive over here. Oh yeah, that's a good bite, it'll stay on. And this one is actually the perfect size because it's a standard terminal blade. Click, tight. All right. So when I close this and slightly cock it, I should be dropping it into our cutout circle spots. So let's try them out. Let's start out with our bottom screw. be really careful, especially with a driver, because they tend to jump. And if you jump off the screw and land on the rubber, you're going to be really upset. So, always be sure to be able to hold things in place nicely. place in nice and tight flat we have a new border around everything so the face frame can sit on it comfortably and just be a black edge that goes around the whole thing give it a little depth so <clears throat> but the one other last thing is these face frames have uh, these little standout spots where the screws come through and uh, you know they stick out a little bit thicker than the face frame itself and they go into these holes well, they're not going to make it that far. So, I got some longer screws, but also, <clears throat> just to make sure things sit comfortably, 
I was thinking it would be a good idea to just put a little foam <clears throat> on, uh, on those spots there. spots to type of fill the void a little bit. Our screws are still going to find those screw holes because the face frame is perfectly lined up to find those screw holes. Alright. So, get ourselves a face frame with a tweeter in it, and remember the blue wire is our positive wire. Plug that into the tweeter. Plug our other wire into the tweeter. And our negative is now in. See, it looks pretty good. Put some screws in. Call this one complete. There we go. What I'm going to do is kind of compress things a little bit. Just a little bit though. Just to make sure that they're biting hard. Let them out in the bite. business. I mean, yeah, that looks pretty good. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I think that's a better look. I like the big, uh, the big center. But, phew, yeah, and like I said, one of these, I mean, these, are, these other ones didn't even match. Now these Dayton Audio ones, they should be a nice match set. They look very similar. They are sold as just speakers, so the production standards are there. So, here's what we have on the side. We have a foam, a foam line all the way around. You know, kind of matches the face frame. Color-wise is excellent. I didn't want to get the, uh, the gray foam. Yeah. Yeah, not bad. All right. And we do the same thing the other speaker. And then we'll hook them up and test them. Can't wait. <clears throat> Just a side note. Those four points are what's going to hold the face frame on. Well, these points had already broken off and were stuck on the uh, speaker cabinet. There was a little bit of a glue repair that had already failed trying to hold things together again, but really those sticky parts that we had pulled off this part of the speaker, you know, really held this face frame on very well. So, I ended up getting the super glue out and putting these back in place, trying to figure out exactly where they went. But, I wanted some extra strength, so I poured a, put a whole base of epoxy on there, just really loaded it up. So, it would, there would be a lot on both surfaces, let it dry overnight. It's uh, nice and hard now, <laughs> those things are you know, it looks horrendous on this side, but that's the side that matters, and uh, I think we're doing all right. So, anyways, another little repair part of the job that happened off camera. And here we have a last chance for a speaker comparison, a side-by-side -side comparison, because this one is going to be modified still. It needs to be... Uh, it won't exactly have the exact same effect as it originally had, as the face frame will sit a little bit higher over this speaker. But, uh, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, just looks a lot better, doesn't it? Looks a lot better. And the funny thing is they actually didn't mount this speaker straight in this hole, too. It's actually justified down towards the bottom. So we can uh, fine-tune the new speaker on this one as well. 
All right, the speakers are back in their place. They're hooked up. We got a song loaded up. We're ready for the test, ready for the moment of truth. speaker sounds and uh, they look great I'm pleased so I think that just about wraps it up for this episode um, be sure to like and subscribe share and uh, we'll see you next time thanks for watching